Hi guys, today I am working on this siren ocean painting. I was really excited to start putting paper down on this piece because it has several areas where I want to really focus on the texture and the details so that I can hopefully bring it to life a little bit more. Those are things that I haven't really focused on as much lately, so I, I think this will be a good push in the right direction. But today I'm specifically going to be painting the ocean and part of the sky. So, so yeah, let's talk about ocean textures and painting the ocean. Uh, but the print of this is actually going to be available exclusively for my patrons. So if you'd like to get a full size 11 by 14 inch print of this, then make sure to sign up for the Citrine tier over on my Patreon by the end of April. That's April 30th. And you can always downgrade or cancel after that. But uh, yeah, this is a great way to get to this, this limited print that's exclusive for Patreon. But, but anyways, let's jump into talking about watercolor painting. Before I started painting this, I was actually really... <laughs> really nervous and apprehensive about actually starting on it because it is really far outside of my wheelhouse. It's a, it's a kind of technique that I very rarely do with watercolors and that's building up texture in the way that I'm going to be doing it for the ocean here. And uh, yeah, it was a challenge that I felt like I needed to give myself because I I want to be able to push the skills that I do have and the, the arsenal of skills that I have with watercolors so that I can achieve more, more things. <laughs> I can paint more things. And like this, I, I really want to paint more settings and environments. So being able to learn how to actually apply textures and details to, to get the looks that I want will open a lot more, more doors creatively for things that I can actually work on. So the first thing that I did was look at tons and tons of references. I looked at so many references of the ocean and rocks in the ocean so I could see how the water interacts with with something that is coming out of the water. I uh, looked at lots of black and white photos, colored photos. I was looking for the way that the water is colored for say like a cave kind of situation like this where it becomes more shallow and you can see the rest of the ocean which is much deeper and I wanted uh, studies of the values so I can figure out how how light actually lands on these little mini waves because I wanted this section of the ocean to be relatively calm so not a lot of not a lot of waves just more of like a a, a texture a texture of the ocean uh, but yeah that is that is the cornerstone for learning new things artistically or probably really anything it can be applied to anything but, but that's looking at reference and uh yeah i had, i had a lot of fun looking at beautiful oceany pictures to get a, a feel of how to actually paint this but but i tried to be a little bit more strategic about it too as far as studying the the way that the i guess the shape language of these little tiny waves in the water looked like so that I could I could study them and have that in my brain as I was painting this and that certainly helped a lot. I wish that I had had the reference up a little bit more while I was actually painting it though. I I, I started going a little bit more by feel at a pretty early stage on this piece and um I think that it, it turned out okay and I'm really happy with the way that the texture ended up looking but I, I think that it could have been more realistic had I really drawn more from the reference as I was working on it but but yeah again that's just a lesson to be learned a lesson to remember in the future uh, but but yeah I, I was really looking at those references to see how to lay out the shadows and the midtones and uh, how to build up the different colors too. That was one thing that I really wanted is I want there to be a certain dimensionality to the way that the colors in the ocean look in this painting so that it's not one stagnant base value and base color. One thing that I did find in a lot of the references is that areas where it was more shallow, so in this cave, I wanted it to be more shallow. Uh, there seems to be a trend where the ocean water can look a lot more green than it does out in the open ocean. So that was something that I really wanted to bring over into this piece. Uh, one thing that I did learn, and I, I kind of knew this, but I took a gamble, is that some pigments just don't really 
radiate together very well, I should say. So I had a certain green pigment that I used for closer to the mermaids. And then there's this transitionary, I think it's a cobalt teal kind of a, a pigment that I have. And then it, uh, it fades into cobalt blue. But that teal one that I have is actually a, an opaque watercolor. And the other two are transparent. And I found in the past that when I use an opaque watercolor with a transparent watercolor, they don't gradiate well at all. They don't create this really smooth wash. I'm sure there's people out there that can achieve a really smooth wash between these two types of pigments, but I have never really had great success with that. So you'll notice if you, if you look at it in that like between area where the rocks come together a little bit closer, the watercolor really does kind of flare out and break apart so that you can see a texture that was unintentional that I did not want there. And I did do a little, little test of all of these pigments together, but it was much smaller. And while it looked really great, it was not really an accurate test of how I was actually going to apply it. So, so yeah, that was, that was something that uh, reminded me that I don't love the effects that I've gotten in the past of mixing those kind of pigments together. So I need to steer clear of that in the future, or I need to do more practice attempts so that I could actually build up potentially the skill to be able to get that blend that I wanted. But I was lucky in the fact that it was in an area, the ocean, that I'm going to rely really heavily on texture. So I'll be able to really camouflage that uh, lack of seamlessness in that layer. One of the things that is really integral for painting the water here is the reflection of the, the things into the water. So the rocks and the mermaids, I was really excited to, to work on this. I love details like this that really helps bring to life a piece. But for, for this, I think I'm going to have to get to the point where I painted the rest of the piece for that kind of illusion to really work. So I went in there with the, or with the, the basic values of, um, of the rocks and the mermaids. And I had that reflected into the ocean. And because I had all of my values already planned out, I was able to do that now without having to wait to paint those elements in themselves. But yeah, I think it's gonna, it's going to really hinge on those actually being painted for, for it to look convincing for us to be able to look at this piece and then see that that's a value reflected from the rock onto the water. But right now it just looks like a darker area of the water. So, so yeah, I'm excited to see that come together. I'm almost positive that once all of that's painted in, it's going to, to look a lot more alive and a lot more like the effect that I wanted. But but yeah, that, that will be fun to see that actually come to fruition. And something that I was really trying to really pay attention to as I was working on this, and I don't know that I've really succeeded. I don't know that I failed either. I'm not really sure at all on, on how I feel about this, but, but I knew that I didn't want to overwork the texture. I didn't want there to be so much texture so uniformly over the piece that there was no areas to breathe, no smoother places for the eye to rest on. This is a mistake that I've definitely made in the past with, uh, with this kind of an effect with too many, too many details, too much texture where it can become really overwhelming and it loses that, uh, that spark. But, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if I overworked it or not. I, I think that there are definitely areas where I could have been a little bit more light handed on the way that I was applying the texture and I could have done less layers there. But, but overall, I think that I, I didn't push it so far that it's, <laughs> that it's irredeemable. That I think is just something that's going to come with practice, with practicing this kind of thing where there's a lot of texture and, and I really just have to have an eye for editing out certain details and leaving certain things in. And I'm just putting down a couple of layers for the sky. It's not complete. I, I still want to get a little bit more of a dynamic glow from the moon. So, so there's going to be some more interaction with that. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I wanted there to be a different type of texture in the sky. And I think that's part of what's key to making textures look really interesting and and unique is to have different types of textures within the same painting. 
So I'll have the the texture of the waves in the ocean and then this more granulated, more traditional, I guess, texture of watercolor in the sky. And then the rocks, I'm not exactly sure what uh, what they're gonna look like texture-wise when I actually do address them, but, but there will be at least a little bit. I think they're going to lean more on the side of a smooth wash with some subtle texturing. So, so yeah, stay tuned for next week for when I, actually address those rocks, I am very excited to get another take at, at painting textures and figuring out a different technique for them and getting some more practice in for that kind of thing. And that's it for this week. I, again, will be working on the rest of the painting next week, so stay tuned for that video coming out. And the exclusive prints are available for my amazing April Citrine tier patrons over on uh, Patreon. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you'd like to get a chance to get this print, make sure to sign up by April 30th for the Citrine tier. And again, you can always downgrade or cancel after April 30th. And uh, then you'll make sure that you actually get this print. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so grateful for all of the support that you guys show me and especially for all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are awesome. But but uh, that is it. So I will see you guys next week with, with more of this painting. <laughs>